full spoilers right off the bat. So don't even watch this if you don't want spoilers because a 60s era sitcom isn't something I'd expect Marvel to commit to for one full episode, let alone two. But they do, and I'm glad to say that the humor and the writing are effective and well-executed enough for my initial impatience in wanting the illusion to kind of come undone. Um, it wore off. There are some fun setups that lead to wacky payoffs, um, my favorite of which being the seemingly innocent commercials for a toaster and a watch. On closer inspection, the watch is actually made by Hydra, and Strucker is the name of one of the dudes that was experimenting on the Maximoff twins, as established by the MCU. The toaster, made by Stark Industries, sports the only use of color in that entire episode with a flashing red light with a rhythmic beeping that steadily increases in tempo like a bomb about to detonate. Uh, remember in the MCU, Pietro and Wanda were children when their parents were killed, and another bomb nearly killed them, uh, both bombs being made by Stark. Agnes is the best character on the whole show, and by episode two you really start to get that picture. Her exaggerated overacting really sells the hell out of this era of television. Whatever they were paying that woman is not enough. The best part of episode one for me is when we finally get a bit of uh, reality. Uh, I don't want to call it collapsing, but, you know, just a little bit of it seeping through the cracks. During a dinner with Vision's boss, he adamantly and persistently asks why they came here, why they're now living where they're living. The boss abruptly starts choking and the boss's wife repeats stop it as if he's fake choking, only to repeat it over and over well past what should have been her recognizing that dude's, this dude's not pretending. At one point, after the man falls out of his seat onto the floor choking, the woman turns to Wanda and repeats, stop it, to her, like laughing, kind of. It's, it's pretty jarring. I like that. Um, Wanda directly, uh, like, almost commands Vision to finally help the man. Before everything abruptly is resolved and they uh, they walk the hell out of the door. That first episode ends with S.W.O.R.D. taking notes while monitoring the very episode that we are watching on a screen. As if within the universe the show that we're watching exists. In the comics, uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. deals with Earth, as you know to have been had by Nick Fury. Um, and S.W.O.R.D. deals with extraterrestrial stuff. Who knows how that's gonna take a shape and the direction that the MCU will go with it in, but boy, Scarlet Witch in the comics has some easily chaotic enough power to be a threat to everybody, not just the people on Earth. When the illusion starts cracking in the second episode, the Beach Boy song, Help Me Rhonda, starts blaring through a radio, and a character literally asks Wanda who she is, as if she's part of this... Uh, illusion, and that's it. The illusion's restored uh, by the end of the episode. Banging noises that were initially dismissed earlier in the episode and attributed to, like, tree branches, they become so profound or severe that Wanda and Vision end up leaving the house only to watch a man in a beekeeper outfit coming up out of the sewer. Uh, Wanda abruptly says no and the whole scene forcefully rewinds back to before they left the house when it's revealed that she is pregnant so what did I think of these two episodes I mean I liked it it was fun creepy uh, yeah, I guess it's a sampler of what's to come and it wet my appetite so I can't imagine the show needed to do anything more vision drunk isn't something that a lot of people probably think they need, but Elizabeth Olsen's acting and Paul Bettany's comedic timing, they made me eager for more. Do I think it's all in Wanda's head? Do I think Mephisto's tormenting her? Man, with only two episodes, I'm not even ready to do all this speculation. I just hope Quicksilver shows up. And if this is meant to lead into Multiverse of Madness, then I hope Doctor Strange shows up too. I thought how this was framed would get on my nerves, but they reeled me in by the end of it. 
Um, and the second episode ends with the color exploding into the scene as if, you know, they're ready to switch things up moving forward. After two episodes, I have no more answers than I did after watching the trailer. And uh, I'm not so sure that's a bad thing. Sucks that we have to wait for more, but I I would recommend this if you're into all the other Marvel stuff. Bye.